The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we're the ones who've encouraged you all along to like and share them on social media and with all your friends and neighbors because if it's happening on the Treasure Coast, you'll probably hear about it on the Sue Ellen Sanders Show. In fact, right now, here's your host, the one and only Sue Ellen Sanders. And welcome to the show. I, I'm really excited to have Ellen Gillette on the show with me. It's been a while since she's been on the show with me, but um, what's interesting is how all of our lives on the Treasure Coast, our lives have kind of paralleled each other. We've both been writers and editors and into the community theater, um, but I, and then even for a while, I was a teacher and Ellen is a substitute teacher. I think the main thing you and I have in common, Ellen, is our love of words. I would um, agree with that. Yeah. And um, over the years, I mean, at the very beginning, people used to kind of mix us up because I was Sue Ellen and you were Ellen and we were both writing for the Tribune. And, and since then, Ellen has written for the Tribune, written for Indian River Magazine, Port St. Lucie Magazine, uh, all iter iterations of the Tribune, scripts, uh, including letters, to anything from letters to the editor, to opinions, to heartfelt editorials. Um, and um, you and I have like kind of followed each other's careers. And the only thing I cannot do at all that you are superb at, well, then not the only thing, but I mean, one of the things, <laughs> sorry, is that you are also an illustrator and, and uh, you uh, have, you've published several books, a lot of books at this point. The last time I had you on the show, you'd um, just uh, published a few, but uh, you you have a children's book that you wrote and illustrated called She Bear in the the what beautiful, garden? The beautiful in garden. The beautiful garden. In the uh -huh. beautiful garden. Um, and then um, you also started publishing a series of books under the name Emily Sharp. That was the last time we had you on the show. <laughs> And back in those days, it was a hidden secret that Ellen Gillette was Emily Sharp. But now everybody knows, because you know what? You, you write different kinds of things for different kinds of people, right? Yeah, it was really amazing. I don't remember how much of the series I had written when we were talking together, but I had written a short story for my writers group, which we used to meet at Use Your Words in Port St. Lucie. Now we meet during Zoom. But from that one short story, which was supposed to be a racy Halloween story, it turned into a book that got published during the <laughs> COVID lockdown. Yeah. And, and, you know, I sent it off. I had let different members of the group take a look and give me feedback. And I had 12 chapters. And so I sent it off and they said, yeah, we want to publish it, but we need a few other elements and it's a little short. So this is kind of what we'd like you to add. And my jaw dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had sort of skimmed over the writer's guideline and yeah. I was quite sure which niche publishing company I had submitted to, but they all contain elements of power exchange. Now, I didn't even know what that meant. Yeah. So uh, it's been an education, but I wrote the first book. I decided to just go ahead and finish it the way they wanted it. I would use a pen name just in case, you know, my family was embarrassed or something. And then they asked me to write a sequel. So during the COVID lockdown, I ended up writing four wow. <laughs> racy romances under the name Emily Sharp. Yes. But you know, at the time when I, when I submitted the first one, I thought, well, maybe if I get my foot in the door, mm -hmm. maybe if I write the way they want it written and they know that I can write, I can take 
suggestions, I can be edited, I can work with people that I, I could get my foot in the door, then maybe at some point I could write something that was more, you know, in my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, after those four and a novella were published, they, the publishing company announced that they were starting an inspirational romance imprint. And that's your wheelhouse. That's my wheelhouse. So I got to work and I wrote um, for such a time, which yeah. is about a, a divorced uh, teacher at a parish school who develops a friendship with a visiting priest from India and sent it to them and they were like this is too inspirational <laughs> it was too much there was you know there's scripture and prayer and bible references and so but my editor from the racy books said i know a publisher in indiana and i think this would be something that she would like and so with that contact so it was kind of getting my foot in the door and Pennant Publishing published that and then another series, a three book series of inspirational romances. And they republished She Bear with some additional illustrations and also a discussion group workbook that I had written many, many years ago that I felt needed to be updated. Uh, they published that also. About. Is that bad sheet? Bad. Yes. Sheet. Yes. Um, and I got a lot of feedback from friends, Facebook contacts, uh, so that we could kind of update the problems that we face in church, uh, you know, whether it's political or dealing with gay children or abortion issues, some things that I really hadn't delved into originally, but are so much a part of the fabric of society today. There are. And, you know, I, I called you before a Renaissance woman because you, you know, there is not a part of words and history and art that you don't dabble in. Um, you are, you know, you know, the ultimate modern Renaissance woman, if that's not <laughs> conflicting. Um, and, <laughs> no, and, and I love the fact that you know you understand that as a writer you can be a chameleon you can be so many different things you can because what you are to different people or what your words mean to different people can be completely different but one thing about your words that you've always been loyal to and that is your words are always kind. They're always kind. I, I try. <laughs> well, it, you know, there was a time in our lives, and Ellen and I are kind of in the same generation again, where it was assumed that people would be kind. That, mm -hmm. that was the assumption that people go along life, be bopping along, and that you always want the best for other people and that you will say the nicest things to other people. And unfortunately, in today's world, that's not always true. And it, it's hurtful. It is. It's very hurtful. And um, recently... <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you the option of how much you want to discuss. I'm willing to discuss everything. Well, recently I yes. felt compelled to write a letter to the editor because of some really unkind marquee uh, announcements that had been made, primarily about Mayor Hudson and Fort Pierce and the chief of police. Um, these are two women who, you know, whether or not you agree with everything they do, they're two women serving the community. They are intelligent, dedicated women who should be respected, if only for their positions. And just some of the vile comments that were made on this public platform, um, when one likened one of the women to an animal, I just kind of snapped and thought, okay, they can't speak out about this because they're public figures. 
Um, but maybe I can express my viewpoint in a letter to the editor. I made it a point not to mention the name of the business or the name of the owner. I just pointed out that, you know, it was a type of bullying. And personally, I would not uh, frequent a place that does that. And that was kind of all that there was to it until my name got plastered on the marquee in a, a very uh, I'm, I'm denigrating kind of way. I'm, I, I, you know what? I, I just, my name has not been on a marquee before. And, you know, I feel like I'm waiting my turn. Now, <laughs> um, there are, there are not just one business in town, because there's other people around the world that use their platforms to hurt other people, to deliberately hurt other people. So that's not that unusual. Mm -hmm. But on the Treasure Coast, um, there is there's one one business that's been renowned for for putting on a marquee in the middle of town for everybody to see nasty things about people, and you know, who and you know this this the thing that gets me is that that this same establishment does some very positive things for the community in terms of, you know, free movies, um, food for veterans, helping the needy, supporting the arts. So it's not like, you know, all bad and all good. It's just, if you've got this public platform, why not use it as a positive yes. voice for the community? Yeah. I why waste your time and resources to draw negative attention to yourself? So we're not going to spend our entire time talking about that because it's not necessary. Uh, but I just wanted you to know that you have our full support as well. Um, and that the thing is that every time an author put something in writing, no matter who they are, or any time a community theater volunteer stands up on stage, they are bearing their soul. They are <laughs> leaving themselves open to comment and criticism. And, you know, one of the things that I did, I did some community theater too, and um, but and but I also covered community theater as a critic. And one thing that was like a standard thing is when you covered community theater as a critic for no whatever publication you were covering for, you kept in mind that those people were volunteers, right. And you you might point out one person being stronger vocally or more believable or something, but you just never trashed anybody. That was just like a... Oh, I got trashed. I got trashed the first play I was in. Did you? <laughs> as, it, as it turned out, I heard that the, the person who had written the review was was kind of jealous because she liked the man that was playing my <laughs> husband <laughs> well you know it is community theater so it's made up of individuals um and but but you know the same goes for you know when when you're writing a book you know when you're reading a book you don't trash somebody just to trash their book just to say mean things about them yeah, you so might well, you're say read it <laughs> yeah, yeah. um but um it it just we i still think that we live in a world where um we are we are no better than the actions we take and the words we say. And so we got to be very careful. There's a, the whole thing about the toothpaste tube. Do you remember the little uh, allegory about the toothpaste tube? I remember being told that I should teach my kids, you know, take all the toothpaste out of the toothpaste tube and then 
um, tell my kids to try to put it back in. And that was a way of teaching them that words are easy to come out like toothpaste, you know, you just squeeze it and they come out. But once they're out, you, it's hard to get them back in. It's impossible to get them back in. Um, I, I remember that there's a, a proverb uh, from Solomon's uh, in the book of Proverbs in the Bible that says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And in relationships, you know, we can speak life to one another. We can be affirming and positive and encouraging and loving, or we can speak death to those relationships by just focusing on negativity and complaining and whining. And, you know, that's just, we, we choose because we've got the power. We can use our words for positive or for negative effect. And every day we make that choice. Every day we make that choice and every situation we make that choice. And even if one day we wake up and say, something that's inappropriate the next day we can wake up and say oh I'm sorry I made a mistake I isn't that amazing what the power of just I'm sorry I didn't mean to hurt you with that yes, yes <laughs> exactly so so anyhow let's let's get back to some of the fun things that you're doing because you're continuing to write and I'm really excited about the things that you're writing, and you're also continuing to perform on the community theater stage. As a matter of fact, uh, your uh, the show that you're in at Treasure Coast Theater has one more weekend left, uh, and it's called... Uh, and then there were none. And then there were none. none. I knew it was a mystery. I... I <laughs> written notes down I just couldn't read my notes yes it's a big uh -huh. cast um, it's directed by Samantha Knight who is a theater teacher drama teacher in Jupiter and and Rosemary Knight's daughter Rosemary so Knight's grown daughter up in the yes. community theater life and, and Rosemary is in the play uh, she plays Mrs. Rogers and we've got some newcomers to the theater but uh, I play a very grim, horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like when I played Nurse Ratchet and oh my uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. You know, it was such a relief at the end to be able to smile again. <laughs> you know, not well, be so you, grim. You really have played all types of different characters on the stage. And we're talking about, I, I like making the parallels between your writing and your acting, because just the way when you write a book, there's something for every voice. When you, you're on stage, when you act in a theater, you know, somebody who is very open-minded, you can play any anyone from Helen Keller's teacher. <laughs> that was a very early show. Well, I actually, I played Helen Keller's mother. Oh, you I, played the mother? You didn't yes, play Yes, I was Mrs. Keller to Don Matlin's captain, okay. Captain Keller. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and but but I mean the variety of characters, the uh, ability to do and nurse nurse ratchet as anybody who's familiar with, uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, um, it is mean and nasty. Yes, and, very and much. Doesn't really have any redeeming characteristics right. at all. But that's, that's that's the challenge of a role yeah. like that is to, um, you know, the audience isn't going to like you, which is kind of counter to where we usually operate from. We want people to like us, but <laughs> with those roles, we want yeah. them to to believe yeah. that we are that person yeah. for the moment. <laughs> so, so if somebody is listening to this show and they're saying, and here's, this is one of my favorite comments at a cocktail party. When people come up to me and they say, what do I do? And I say, I'm a writer. And they say, oh, well, when I retire, when I did it, I'm going to be a writer too. It's like, like a writer is not a real career. Like, <laughs> like a writer is just, you know, whatever, you know. Not a real job. Yeah, not a real job. <laughs> but it. 
it it is the the nice thing about being a writer is because there's so many different types of books and there's so many different types of publication options now that if you want to write you can write all it requires is you sitting down and putting words on your computer or on paper so if somebody wanted to get started with all that Ellen where would you tell them to start well I have been very blessed to be part of the use your words writers group because so a that- writers group a writer's group we meet once a month via Zoom and we share things that we're working on. It might be a poem, it might be a letter, an article. Uh, If I'm working on a a fiction book, it might be a chapter and we read and encourage. It's just a very friendly, open environment. And they really pushed me uh, to seek a publisher. But since then, you know, I had first self-published She Bear with Les Maison Publishing in Vera. And that was a great experience. But uh, when I got, a you know, an indie publisher, a traditional publisher, uh, that's great. You know, you don't have to put yeah. out money for that. Yeah. But I would encourage anybody who's wanting to publish, whether it's self-publishing or submitting to a publisher, please Find some people who will give you an honest assessment, somebody who will be a first reader and point out typographical errors or things that they just don't understand. If the flow is wrong or there's too many characters, you really need to get some input from other people. I've had the pleasure of editing several books and um, getting inside somebody else's head. That's a lot of fun. But even like the the last book that I had published, it's the third in the Yana Valley series. And I bet the editor and I went back and forth before the final version, probably four or five times. Every time I went back through it, I found something that needed to be changed. I mean, just tiny little things, but you want it to be perfect. So you know, our brains see what we think we've written. And so it's really important to have other eyes, whether you pay an editor uh, for that responsibility for, you know, copy editing and maybe content editing, or if you're going to self-publish, you know, there are some self-published books out there that are excellent. They've really put in the time and there are some that really needed to be edited more thoroughly before they were put out there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, there are. you're putting all that time and effort and heart into something. You want it to be as close to perfect as you possibly can get it, or it's not going to sell. You know, if people pick it up and, and see a bunch of errors, then they're not going to be happy that they bought it. They're, they're <laughs> going to stop. They're going to stop the yeah. reading. Um, there's, uh, as a snowbird now in, uh, visiting in, in North Carolina, there's a group up here called the Pamlico Writers Group, and they have a workshop every year, and it's a combination of writers who are both, um, self-published and and traditionally published and i know that in st lucie county and on the treasure coast the libraries frequently host writers groups too the use your words group that you're talking about that's the one that orig- originated out of the inner truth project correct yeah. mm-hmm. is that still run by wendy dwyer it is. She yeah. moved to Virginia, and that was one of the reasons why we went to Zoom. COVID was another. Yeah. But, uh, we've got people in Colorado and Virginia and Florida and all around. So that's been good. So that that is something that you could find on social media, too. The other thing that I have seen that is very helpful and you know, I've been writing, but I haven't tried to publish anything other than I've been published in about one, seven different chicken soup for the soul books. Oh, cool. uh, but those are just stories. And that's more of a traditional thing where you just submit the story and you don't get involved in any of the publication part of it. 
Um, but um, one of the things that I found very useful is social media um, groups, like Facebook groups that are mm -hmm. writer groups. Um, yeah. Because as you mentioned, you know, uh, the Inner Truth Project, the Use Your Words is, is Zoom, but there are a lot of forums where you mm -hmm. can you know, get suggestions and feedback from people. Yeah, I also, for a while, I signed up with uh, Writers Guild. Uh, Jerry Jenkins wrote a whole 200 books, I think. And he has this Writers Guild online. That's It got a little pricier than I wanted to spend, but in the short amount of time that I was there, I could access a lot of interviews with authors and publishers and... Uh, he's got a lot of free material as far as uh, just, you know, plot effect and characterization and just some really good, solid techniques. So, mm -hmm. you know, somebody just starting out, signing up with an online writer's guild where there's going to be somebody to kind of mentor you as you go through, I think that would be helpful also. At the very least, too, I would suggest getting a subscription to a magazine like Writer's Digest. Mm -hmm. um, so you then you have both the uh, publication and you have the online publication where you get you, you. If you surround yourself with people who are writers, then you're likely to do more of what they're doing. Um, and a lot of the the writers groups that I've joined on uh, Facebook and on Instagram have, you know, given, like you said, good suggestions, but also good suggestions on how to avoid being ripped off because there are a lot of um, organizations out there that are, you know, telling you they're traditional publishers and they're going to publish your book, but you still have to pay for it. Right. Yeah. And you have to pay for it ahead of time before you even turn anything in. Yeah. And, and some people have, and some of the local authors I know have been really successful. Uh, they, I know one gentleman who was coming to the group when we were at the facility in Port St. Lucie, had had some real technical books published traditionally. And then he decided that he would uh, opt for self-publishing the next one and, and liked the control that he had, um, you know, which you don't have. So I know several people who have self-published and had real success. I illustrated a children's book series for a man who was living in Vero. He's moved away now, but he self-published those. And I think he's he's done a lot of marketing and had a lot of success. You know, it's just depends on, on what you want. I would love to have an agent, you know. Yeah. I have not been able to, I haven't put in the time is what it is. You know, for a writer to be successful, they have to write. You know, that's right. the first thing. Just show up yeah. <laughs> and start writing. Yeah. But there's a lot to the business of writing. Uh, if you can get a, an agent or if you are successful enough to need a publicist, those kinds of things. I would much rather spend my time writing. Right. Or like, I, like yesterday morning, I interviewed just a wonderful man for an article for Indian River Magazine. And I would much rather be doing that than trying to sell what I've written. Right. No, exactly. It's all according to your your wheel of your preferences what what people want to do and what they're best at um, but um, one of my favorite success stories lately has been the story of Haley Dicker who is Haley Bruin Scott and Monique's daughter and she just moved back here from uh, Germany where she was living with her husband for about six years but she's a young woman, she's my kid's age, so she's right about 30 years old, and she decided she was, she has two little ones, and um, she decided she was going to start writing. She's always been a writer. She's written one thing or another, but she wanted to publish, and so she did, she went and did the Kindle 
publishing. Mm -hmm. And um, then she has published several other books since then. And then she just moved back here and started a small business that she calls Scribbles, which is an online bookstore where she sells other people's books and she helps market other oh. people's books. So it's not just something that you do when you're in the second part of your career cycle. Oh, right, right. It's something that you can do to start off too. And that's what Haley's doing. And I love that she's embraced her love of writing and stories and turned it into something that um, the, she she calls them, they are spicy romances, uh, but they're spicy romances that are set in the college age and in the yeah. young cities. And there, there are so many sub genres of romance books. It's yes. amazing, you know. Yes, it is. You know, the fav one of my favorite types of writing was when we were writing those weekly columns for the newspaper yeah. because. I knew that I think my day was Wednesday there for a while. On Wednesday morning, people were waking up and having their coffee and reading what I had written. And there was such a connection to the people in the community, even if they disagreed with me, you know, and they might stop me at the grocery store and say, you know, ah, you know you're terrible. But it, it was just- I can't wonderful. believe you did that. <laughs> It was it was great. I yeah. loved that. And I miss that yes. you know, connection. Um, I don't expect to ever be rich or famous, but I love it when, say, a teacher where I'm subbing uh, says, oh, I just finished your book. It's so good. I'm passing it on to somebody else. So that is. And, and I, you know, as you talked about the newspaper column, I was Monday's. Okay. And so for 15 years, I wrote a weekly column that was about the family. And my children um, were, when I started the column, it was right before my daughter was born. So they were kind of raised with that column. And I didn't always write about them, but I wrote about a lot of things that were in my mind and in my heart because of the age that they were. Right. I wrote a lot about safety issues and water safety and fire safety and and stranger danger and and how we try to raise our children up right. And I had the same thing like people would stop me in the grocery store and say um, something about you know how about my children. And this last week, I was at the eye doctor's, St. Lucie Eye, um, in uh, uh, Fort Pierce, and a woman who I had not immediately recognized said, I really miss your newspaper column. That great? And it was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, since I stopped writing that 15 years ago, that's like, <laughs> you still miss it, huh? Um, but but she also talked about the fact, and it was true, that it was back when newspapers were a gentler, kinder world, too, where you look for newspapers for for happy things, to read about the the people that were doing wonderful things in the community um, and uh, the people who were aging gracefully and the people who were doing community theater and they were doing um, great th other great things for the community. They were building children's playgrounds and they were uh, all sorts of community things. And yeah. unfortunately they just don't have the resources now and, you know, it's sad. I, I hope that all of your listeners subscribe to the, to the local newspaper, because if we don't have a local newspaper, we really lose the accountability with our elected officials. I mean, we're not going to go to all of the city commission meetings and the county commission meetings and the press conferences at the sheriff's department. We need local reporters who are going to give that information back to us so we can make informed decisions decisions no that's that's exactly true um and then um it's nice that 
there are still so many ways to give back to the community. And even if you can't do it through, you know, if, if you're not somebody who wants to perform on the stage, which by the way, every community theater actor does not get paid. Can we just go on record as that? <laughs> yeah. you put it's it's hours, for the love of theater. <laughs> hours and hours and hours. And, and, and boy, memorizing lines gets a lot tougher um, as, as, as we age too. Um, but they put in all of those hours and they put them in for free so you can come to a show and enjoy it. Uh, but if that's not something that rings your, your bell, if that's not something that you want to do, uh, turn around and find something that's in the community, that's something that's important to you, um, whether it's volunteering for, you know, uh, animal shelter, uh, humane society, or uh, giving back through an organization like a larger organization like the Heart Association or the Lung Association. Um, there's just so many ways that we can give back that, you know, for us to look around and say, yeah, our community isn't the same as it used to be without accepting responsibility for, right. for making that community a better place. Um, I just um, met with the the team that's working on the illuminations for Heathcote's Garden of Lights. Uh, I, I mean, talk about volunteers. I mean, it yeah. takes an army of volunteers to put yeah. on the Garden of Lights each year. It's just amazing. They work all year long. And then, and then there's people who their thing is to go out and weed or, you know, dig around plants. And there's just, there's something in... St. Lucie County for everybody, a way yeah. to give back, uh, yeah. you know, people with young children and commitments and, you know, their incomes are limited, you know, sometimes they're not able to do as much as they want to, but that just makes it more important for those who can uh, mm -hmm. to, to take that step. We can become so isolated and, and inward if we're not trying to find ways to connect with other people and to give back to the community in a positive way. That sure is true. So so let's move back a little bit, just a little bit to people who aren't so kind um, and people who are, because the, the mailings I've got, the comments I've gotten, um, on the Treasure Coast, the, like the local political scene, I have never seen so nasty and so. Uh, Every day, so, the mailbox is disappointing. Oh. disappointing. <laughs> um, how does one push back? on that how do you how do you still walk around and wake up every day and feel good about the world when we've got all this negativity weighing down on us it's a it's a challenge it's i mean i know you're not a psychologist or anything no i and i have never <laughs> i've never seen things as polarized um and as manipulated. I mean, it's a little scary when you see how easy it is to overlay, uh, you know, drunken mumbling on a video of Kamala Harris. I mean, she's the vice president of the United States. Yeah. And yeah. there's, you know, on social media, I've seen several postings of a thing where it looks like she's out of her head, you know, and yeah. it was it, it, all it takes is a few clicks on Google to discover that that's been faked. Um, but if it's what people want to believe, whether about any candidate, they don't often fact check to see if it's accurate. I think that's one way we can inject a little more positivity is just making sure that what we post is accurate and we've got the information to back it up. We haven't just copied and pasted something or shared something without knowing its validity. And just keeping in mind that we need to be positive, like seeing a dog's tail wagging. <laughs> that's 
that's very that's, positive. That's, that's my positive. Yeah, that's my positive. <laughs> Amazing. Sam was up here earlier. Um, but, um, you know, you're talking about untrue news. Um, but even something like, like on social media, you'll see different things that post, like that there's one organization, I don't know who does it, they call it Netflix community, but it's not actually Netflix. And it posts fake things about things that are happening. And the first time I was like, oh, there's a part two to this movie that's coming. And then I realized, no, it's not. They engineered that movie poster and they put stuff on it. And I'm like, and so it's got to the point where you don't know what you can trust and what you can't trust. And yeah. so you got to believe in yourself and you got to believe you got to have your circle. You have, you have to have your circle of people that you know understand the real world and that aren't going to mislead you or alternatively you you can have those people that you ignore <laughs> yes. well I, I mean i really believe that politics should not be a factor it shouldn't be allowed to create rifts between your loved ones you know, I mean, I I may vote differently than a lot of people in my own family, but that doesn't change the way I feel about them. I love them. And I know, I understand that even though I, I disagree on some points, because we've had um, reasonable, open dialogue, I understand where they're coming from. I may not agree that that's the most important thing. Or you agree to disagree. Right, just, yeah. right. I mean, just, it's just ridiculous know, if people yeah. just, you know, oh, I don't want to have anything to do with them. They voted for this person or that person. Well, yeah. you know, that's, yeah. that's not good. That's just a part of their life. Well, so we're talking about the, the fake uh, uh, alternative stuff. And one of the other things I remember I was going to ask you about was have you used any AI? I have not. I have not. Uh, my son has has told me about uh, just playing around with some AI, and and a friend of mine who writes for a magazine had used it like sort of to get a starting point for an article. You know, just kind of plug in some things to see what it would come up with, and it wasn't really up to date, but it kind of helped organized thoughts for the article. So I really haven't. Um, well, my used... husband used it the other day, put a resume in it to get a bio. So, you know, it's not like the information was different. He just right. wanted it in a different format. But um, artificial intelligence, that's one of the things that they talked about with the Pamlico Writers Group, because especially when in some types of literature, um, it's being overrun by people who are writing with artificial intelligence. And a lot of times you and I might be able to recognize that kind of stuff, or it could just be somebody who's not really a very good writer who's writing. Yeah, um, I don't know. I saw a post just today, somebody had ordered a, an adult coloring book and it was generated by AI. And like the cat's tail was really weird <laughs> and it hadn't gotten everything right. <laughs> yes. And so. and it's it's um they're they're telltale signs of using AI, but um I played around with it since I, I heard them talking about it at that that writers group meeting. And I'll take a short story that I've written and put it in and just put the words, what happens next? Just oh to see God. what the yeah. eye says. Yeah, so it's like, um, and 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 it's usually extremely trite and predictable because it is AI. Um, but I've kind of had a fun time playing with it, not that I would use it. And I would not, I mean, I wouldn't use it for something that I was 
calling my own work let's right. put it that way. I, I might use it as it, it it's very functional if you are somebody who wants to write a press release and you don't really know how to write a press release, uh, mm -hmm. but you have the basic information, you could plug that in um, and then get a decently written press release to send out to the press um, to, to let them know that your children's playground is going to be open or yeah. you're looking for volunteers or you know something like that so it is useful in what I've seen but you know I, I see all sorts of things about how you know it, it's all part of the not being true to yourself I mean is writing something using artificial intelligence is that really writing and why bother because it's not like it's really going to make you a lot of money anyhow. Yeah, writing, I, to me, I mean, it's it benefits me. I get a lot out of just the process of writing uh, as a discipline. And like when I finished the, the Yana Valley series, I mean, I was reading through it, the last book, and I was just in tears. I, I mean, I, I get very connected to my characters, <laughs> and I'm sorry to see them go. You know? So I've got love in Yana Valley, joy in Yana Valley, peace in Yana Valley, and I'm thinking, maybe I need to return to Yana Valley. Return to Yana Valley. Back or something. That, I, well, I get involved you know, yeah. and so I'm not interested uh, right now in AI because I, I think that that would just keep me separated from, from the people, from the people from I'm writing. The people, <laughs> the people <laughs> you, you know, you've already created and love. How do you, do you actually, um, I, I, and I'm also writers groups. I know people who write just they sit down and write from start to finish and then other people who plot. Um, yeah, in that uh, Writers Guild that I belong to, Jerry Jenkins talked a lot about that, that there are pantsers and plotters and plotters okay. you know, have outlines and, and, and then the others fly by the seat of their pants, you know, kind of yeah. thing. I'm, I'm more of a pantser. <laughs> are you a pantser? I'm a pantser too. Oh, I forgot another author that is local that um is uh oh i'm blanking out on her name now but she's being published by everyone uh she, regular publisher her her mom uh worked in st Lucie county just recently moved to orlando i'll think of it i'm blanking out on it <laughs> uh, but she's got like probably eight books that she's published now and um she uh she, she just she was teaching college english and she started writing and she um just started taking it one step at a time and her first books aren't as exciting um or well written um but then she got better and then she started submitting them. And so um, she's just, she's she's got probably eight or 10. Darn. I, I think of it as soon as I stop. Anyhow, I should, of course. <laughs> should, should, shouldn't have mentioned her. her. Her mom used to work for Habitat for Humanity. So we, we played this like guessing game of uh, yeah. uh, anyhow. So she lives in Texas now, but she she writes on a regular basis. And some of her books are so well researched, I see. Um, and uh, Can I just say if uh, people are interested, I do have a website. It's okay. um, ellenandemily.com. And so you can click on the book covers and go to the Amazon link and read a more description. But it's it's real clear that there are different types of books. You know, there's a nonfiction, a children's, inspirational romances, and then the adult romances uh, by Emily Sharp. So there shouldn't be any confusion about, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I have been accused uh, recently of peddling porn. I'm not. Uh, the Emily Sharp books are 
more graphic, more adult. They have some language and some sex, but they are affirming to women and they are, are just good stories with good characters and happy endings. And you tell a good story and the Yona uh, Valley stories are the inspirational stories. Yes, and they really should be read in order because they kind of each one end uh, with sort of a cliffhanger. You can also, uh, so so Emily, Ellen and Emily. Ellen and Emily is the website. And, and then you can also go directly to Amazon and put in Ellen Gillette. And right. then all of your books come up and you'll have like a guide to all of the different books that, that oh, Ellen. Ellen. <laughs> and of course, you know, not to uh, leave out the, the community call it the community theater end of it you know the shows um you could be a part of that scene too by trying out for a show yeah Ellen audition Gillette. usher yeah right and yeah a lot, lot of different <laughs> a little, lot of different opportunities ellen gillette has been such a pleasure catching up with you i really oh, appreciate my you. pleasure thank you and so much goodwill for everything that you've done for our Treasure Coast community. So you can check her out on Ellen and Emily or, or uh, Ellen Gillette on Amazon. You've been listening to the Sue Ellen Sanders Show. I'm here every week with, with more. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. The Sue Ellen Sanders Show. Weekends, 7.05 a.m. on WPSL. Don't miss the next episode. Happens Saturday and Sunday mornings, 7.05 till 8. And sometimes a little extra every once in a while. And on YouTube.